Now the first thing that you're going to need for your labs at home is to find uh, your own C programming thing. So this is Visual Studio Download. So if you just type in, let's take a look here, free Visual Studio Download. And if you do that and hit the Enter key, it should take you to this page here. And over in here, you're going to find that Visual Studio 2008 Express Editions are available. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go to Downloads and show you what's available here. And under all of this stuff that you're going to see, if we slide down here, this is the one we want here, Visual C++. So at this point, all you have to do is actually just hit the Download button here and download Visual Studio C++ and follow through with what it says to install it at home. When you've done that, then you'll be able to work at home. And the next thing we're going to do is show you, because we should have it already installed in the lab, and we're going to need two things to get going, and we'll take care of that as soon as you've got this download working and ready for home use as well. To get started on lab number one, we're going to have to launch two applications from the desktop. Now you're going to find these someplace on the desktop. One is Microsoft Visual C++ 2008 Express, and the other application is Internet Explorer. Now I'm going to launch Microsoft Visual C++ first, and you can see it's going to come up with an interface like this. I'm going to put this in the background, and now let's launch Internet Explorer. Now what we're going to find is Internet Explorer, if you type in to the address bar, as you can see here, my dot Seneca College, on one word, dot CA, it's going to launch what's called Blackboard. Blackboard is a utility that allows us to log in and have access to material uh, that instructors have put online for you. So I'm just going to log in. Now, to log in for you, it's usually what you're going to find on the bottom left-hand corner of your timetable is going to be your login. Uh, and it'll give you that as part of your name and I think it's your password you'll have to check but I think it's your password is going to be your student ID so you can just hit enter and go in and once you've got access and if you don't get access check with your instructor maybe they'll be able to help you out since this is the first lab and what you're going to find after this launches is over to the right here it's going to have for you a list of all your courses these are the courses that instructors have put material on for you to look at. Now, since I am the instructor, I have a number of different theory sections and lab sections for PRG. And you'll notice here I've got PRG 155A, if that happens to be your lab section, because the single letters are your labs, the double letters, such as AC, is theory. Since this video is about lab sections, you'd expect to find your information in PRG 155 and a single letter, not a double letter. So I'm just going to take a look here under PRG155A. That's one of my lab classes that I'm looking after here. And once that launches, what you're going to find over here is whatever categories that your instructor has put in. Typically, you're going to find announcements, but it could be random as to what these titles are and where to find your labs. In my case, usually, but not always, usually I put them under assignments. And we're going to take a look here. And I'm just clicking on assignments, and when that launches, it's going to show you what is in that category. Now, these are where I've put my labs, PRG Lab 1, Lab 2, and it says, please print out and bring this lab with you to um, PRG Lab Class. Now, what you're going to find is that if we click on these links, and you should print these out uh, right away so that you have all the labs you're going to do all semester, but if you click on them, and usually the instructor will give you the first lab here and print it out for you, but the rest of them you'll have to do yourself. But you should print here neatly your last name, print neatly your first name, put in your student ID number here, and circle whichever one of these happens to be your lab class. So if it says PRG 155D on your timetable, this is what you put in here. Now, you can read through this. This is some very important information that may be tested during the course. But the first thing that you're going to have to do is to go here where it says, here's how you interact with Visual Studio C++. Some of the things it says is new projects, and then you're going to have to go through that. And I'll take you through that with Visual Studio C++ right now and show you how all this interaction is talking about on this page takes place. So let's do that at this point.
Blackboard. As you can see, we're in Blackboard at this point, but if you hold down the Alt key, A-L-T key, it's right beside your spacebar, and as you're holding it down, press the Tab key, and what you'll find is doing that and keeping the Alt key down and pressing Tab, it's going to cycle through all of your active applications. We have two active applications at this point. We have Internet Explorer, and if we hit the Tab key holding down Alt, we're going to go to Microsoft C++ Visual Express. So if we let up on the Alt key at this point, it jumps us across, and if we want to switch back, we can just go back and we're here. So this is a quick way of switching between our applications. Now we're going to say File as it shows on Lab 1, Page 2. We're going to say New. We're going to go to Project, and it should come up with this screen here. And if we take a look, under our project types, we have three possible types of projects, CLR, Win32, and General. What we're going to do is we're going to select Win32. Over here to the right, we're going to be developing Win32 console applications. A console application is a keyboard and a screen with a program written to deal with that. So we're going to be writing code that deals with taking input from the keyboard and generating output on the screen. Down at the bottom here, we can find name, and we're going to have to type in a name. Notice that I've got F colon because that's where my USB drive is. If you don't have a USB drive today, you're going to have to type in C colon. And if you do, you're going to find that information you put on C drive for today will be gone because we have it set up in the lab so we have something called deep freeze. And deep freeze only allows uh, stuff that the operator put in originally to stick around. And when they boot, reboot the computer, anything that you put in is going to be erased. So we're just going to type in lab1, and notice it put in exactly what we typed in for solution name as well. Over here to the right, we're going to have create directory for the solution. That keeps our bookkeeping fairly straightforward. And then we're just going to hit OK. And if we hit OK, what it's going to do is it's going to come up with this next screen. And we've got two possible settings, overview, and that's what this is here. This is an overview. And down at the bottom, we can either click Next to go to the next screen, or what we can do is hit Application Settings, which is the next screen. So I'm just going to go down here and hit Next, and it's going to take us to here. And as you can see, just flipping on these two switches is between these screens. What we're going to do for today, and there's a couple ways to do this, but what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have Application Type Console Application clicked, and down here we're going to have Precompiled Header unchecked. So we're going to uncheck that. Uh, the next lab we're going to do is we're actually going to specify an empty project, but for today we'll, we'll take a look at what they have as a standard one. And we're going to say finish. And what it's going to come up with when it finishes is we're going to see a structure off here to the left. We're going to see all of these things. Solution for lab one. We've got header files, target, uh, resource files, uh, source files, and so on. And a lot of this stuff that's here isn't necessary to be here. But uh, you'll also find over here we've got lab1.cpp. CPP stands for C++. And you can see all the code here, and there's going to be questions about this stuff later. But right now, you can see integer underscore t main integer argc. This is not exactly what you're going to see in a lot of the course textbooks. And we're going to type in stuff that's going to be a little bit more in line with what the textbooks show. Now, once we've got this, let's go back to our lab. We're going to hold down the Alt key and press Tab and go back to Internet Explorer again. Let's see what we've got here. It says, most experienced programmers find that they are more efficient using keyboard shortcuts. And it says, what are all these keyboard shortcuts? And it's just a little exercise to fill these in. Now, it says that you can find those under File, Edit, View, Build, and Debug. So let's go back and see new project. That's what we're looking for. So let's go back and we can say file new. And under project it says control plus shift plus n. And under open it says control plus shift plus o. And open file is control plus o. So if you go through these various headings, it will show you what those keyboard shortcuts are. So if you look under here, that's all you have to do is just write these down. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes to do that. And once you've got to that point of filling in that chart completely, uh, you can restart the video and we'll go on to the next section. Now that you've filled in this chart, let's see what we have to do next. And step three assumes that we haven't yet opened up Blackboard and logged in and taken a look at stuff, but we have. But it says what we're going to do is use this text select tool. 
and let's take a look up at the top here there's a hand tool and that so let's just bring up our magnifier so we can take a look at it so if we have this one it looks like an I capital I with an arrow beside it that's our text select tool so you can switch between these but if we have this one selected you're able to hold down the left mouse button and select all of this text it should turn this color and if we hold down control and C as it said as one of your shortcuts control C is actually copied all of this stuff now if we hold down alt and go to tab and go over here to um, Visual Studio C++ Express we should be able to click anywhere in this window here do control A which you know is select all and control V to paste everything in now once you do that now it seemed to make a little bit of a mistake up here but we've got all of our code in here one of the other things that we saw is we can go full screen so let's take a look and see where we saw that let's flip across where is it here under view there we are shift plus all plus enter so if you use that key shortcut it should switch you into full screen mode here now one of the things that you saw is um, we had to change uh, these quotes it mentions about the quotes and also says we should indent this stuff now here's how you do indentation you can actually highlight all of this and if we take a look up here <coughs> excuse me there is some tools up here for doing indentation there they are there and let's take a look and see what it says up here this one is decrease indent the one beside it if we click on that is increase indent and by doing that see what happened here it indented all of the stuff across which is what we want now if you want to undo that you can try one of your other keyboard shortcuts control Z and we're back here so again let's take a look we'll bring up the magnifier here this increase indent thing is a very useful tool because if we want to move everything over we just highlight what we want to move over and just click on it and it's been properly indented so this is how your coach will look as indentation is done now what we have to do is change the quotes now notice right now what is the color of the text it's all black but as soon as I change this to a proper quote because Adobe fonts are do not give you proper quotes we type in a proper quote oh my god it's turned red if we also look right at the very end here you notice everything from this point right to the very end including the parenthesis and the semicolon the round bracket and the semicolon are all red they shouldn't be and the reason they shouldn't be is because we haven't checked and change this double quote at the end now this is how it should look if we take a look now with our magnifier uh, the brackets and the semicolon at the end should be black the printf and the bracket here should be black but everything in the middle here should be red and that's how you know you've got your code done properly this is called color syntax highlighting and we only have two more quotes to change so let's change that let's change this quote here let's change this quote here and now we have our program completely done the way it's supposed to be and if we take a look let's just get rid of this screen here so we have a little bit more real estate so this is our full screen here and it's asking us in the lab not really about the code per se but once we've got these cleanups done what colors do we have for includes now there's two colors for the include if we take a look up here the first part of the include is blue and the second part of the clue is red so we've got two colors we're going to type blue here and type red there now it says the next thing is what is the color inside the printf if we take a look everything inside the printf inside those brackets is indeed red red then it talks about functions we're not sure what those are yet but something that's called main printf and get char what color are those let's take a look main is black printf and get char are all black so that's what we write in here is black what are the color are the comments and the comments are these comments here it says this is a comment wait for the enter key to exit and you'll notice that these are all green so what we're going to do over here is just write in green it says now that you've uh, program is coded properly you've changed those coding problems of the quotes we want to start debugging your code and it says show the keyboard shortcut well if you remember do you remember what it is if you think about it well let's take a look back here and see color so they're all right what do we have to hit we have to hit F5 so if we hit F5 it does all this stuff at the bottom it compiles does this does that all this kind of stuff and linking that's an important thing and when we get all that happening it's actually going to run our code 
and it says build started, a bunch of other stuff going on here. So it's building all of our code and creating a final executable, and there it is running. So this is our output window. We haven't typed anything in from the keyboard, but it's generating output up on our screen. There it is. And if we hit the enter key, it's going to terminate and go back to this screen. And so our program has run properly. So what is a keyboard shortcut? Just type in F5. So we'll continue on in a second. Okay, it's time to head on to step number five. Let's see what that is. It says modify the program to look like the one below. Simply add the bold italic section to your code and remove the comments. So with the comments removed, this will be what our code will look like. And then we're just going to add this. So being the lazy people that we are, we're going to grab all of this stuff again, control C, and we're going to alt tab back over here. And before we do anything, let's get rid of our comments. Oop. And again, let's go view and go full screen so we can see a little better what we're doing. And let's get rid of our output window here. So we'll get rid of our comments. And after the get chart, I think, is where we paste this stuff. And again, let's grab this stuff here. Let's do the indent so that's done easily. And let's change all the quotes. Now in about a minute's time, don't forget there's a number of quotes. Uh, usually there's one at the beginning and one at the end. Notice down here there's actually three double quotes and there's even a single quote. Whether it's double or single quotes, those have to be changed. So when you get that finished, we'll pick it up from there in a few seconds. Now as you can see here, I've fixed everything up except I haven't changed this single quote. Now I'm going to hit F5 and see what happens. It says it's compiling and it's doing all its things, it's linking and so forth. And we'll see our output window shortly. There we go. But strangely enough, we've added a lot of other code and it's only running the program up to this point. And I think you'll see why, because if we understand, let's try and understand a little bit of this code. The code actually starts after this bracket. Printf is a way of sending stuff to the screen. So this is your first C program. Hit any key to continue and then get char. What it does basically is it holds the screen open so you can see what's going on. And it's waiting for us to type in a character. So we're going to hit, well actually the special character it's waiting for is the enter key. So we're going to hit the enter key and the rest of the code comes up. Now that's a pretty much what's going on. So you send some stuff to the screen, you wait for a key press, which is an enter key, you type some other stuff and you wait and hold the screen open again with the get chart. Now notice a couple things here. The backslash n is a special character which goes to a new line. So it's going to go to a new line here, then go to another new line and hit any key to continue and wait for any key to be pressed. Notice here this backslash n, we'll talk more about that later, but after a while you get an idea of what this code is doing. Notice the one thing I didn't do, as I said, is I didn't change, let me just bring that back up here. I didn't change this uh, single quote and notice here when it prints out, it's printing a funny alternate character. So I'm going to change that and continue on and see what, what's going to happen. I'm just going to click on the screen and hit enter and what we're going to do is just change this to a proper single quote and we can run it again. I'm just going to do that a little later but you, that will get rid of that remaining problem. Now let's see what the lab is, says that we're supposed to do next. Let's just go over and take a look. So we've done all this and it says make sure and everything seems to be running fine. It's run this bit of code, waited for a key press, done this and everything seems fine. It says now Here's the uh, next part. It says, further modify the program to add a start of comment and an end of comment. And these are multi-line comments. When you put this, you can have a number of lines in between. So that's what we're going to do next. And then it says, describe what happens when you do this. So again, we're just going to put this in here and put this here, see what happens. Let's go back and try that. So let, again, let's go, we're in full screen mode. Let's just move this down a little bit so we can see what's going on and leave a break here. And I just hit enter keys to do that. Now watch what happens when I put in a forward slash and a star. Notice everything from this point right to the bottom. Not everything, but just from this point to the bottom turns green. And that's what it's asking here in our program uh, lab. It says describe what happens when you put this in. Not everything turns green, but everything from that point, from this point here to the bottom, 
returns italic green, meaning that it's going to be a comment because you put in the start of comment, but it has no way of knowing where it is to end. And the end of comment, when you put it in, it'll know that's the end of it. So let's write down what happens when you put it in. Everything from the start of comment to the bottom of your code turns green, making it a comment. So let's now put in the end of comment, which is a star slash. Notice this is turned black, but if we click anywhere else, you can see that this is now ital or not italic green, but regular green, which means that this is commented out, and this is going to be the only active code. So when you first put this in, let's just do a Control Z. There it is, and Shift Control Z will bring it back. So there's a way of doing and undoing, and you can get this again under Undo here, Undo, and then Redo, and so Control Y will do it as well. So we can do Control Z, Control Y, and you see that it does indeed change. And so we've commented this out. What does a comment mean? Well, if we hit F5 now, it's going to rebuild. And at this point, it should not print out this part because we've commented it out. So, and that's exactly what we see. And we've changed everything around. We've changed everything around so that you can see that this part, this is your first C program, does not show up here. Let's just scroll up to here and bring up our output again, take a look at it. Some of the things that you'll notice is, whoops, some of the things, let's just bring that up a little bit. This is a strange thing. And notice what's happening here. Backslash N means it's not going to be on the top line, it's going to be on the second line. This is a strange thing, but isn't it? It shows up all in the same line, even though it's on two separate lines here. One of the things you're going to learn is that uh, it's going to any printf you do three printfs with no backslash n all of those printfs put information on the same line. If you want information on different lines, you put a backslash n until it gets this backslash n. Everything stays on exactly the same line. Notice that we also have two percentages here to get a single percentage coming up on the screen. Uh, a double backslash gives us a single backslash and a backslash quote gives us a quote coming up on the screen. So these are some things that are going to be important. Now one other thing I'm going to show you is very important is if you right mouse click down to edit, go over to mark, notice there's a flashing cursor up here. If you hold down the left mouse button on that and slide it over here and select this area of text and then just right mouse click anywhere in the black region here and if we close that what we've done is we put all of the output of this program into uh, the paste buffer. Now here's what you can do because what we want to do, and this is a great way of using comments, if we go right down after a program, remember well our program starts here and ends here, so let's put ourselves on the line after that and put a start of comment. If we put a forward slash star, hit enter, and then do control V, which is paste, and do star slash because we did uh, that stuff before. Then we've put a comment in of here's our program and here's the exact output. So backslash n, it's not on this line, this is a strange thing, space, isn't it? And then it goes to a new line here. You can actually print out your program. Here's my program, but here's exactly the stuff that it generates as output. And this is a very powerful thing to do. If we continue on, it says use the keyboard shortcuts to start debugging, and I think you know what that is. Yep, F5. Now it says show the exact output below in pencil because one of the typical questions that get asked on quizzes and tests and so forth is to show the exact output of a program based on what you've done. Now if we want to go over we can either run it or we can take a look at this. I'm just going to run it again. I'm just going to do the F5 thing. Let it compile, link and so forth and come up with the code because then I can take that output window. Now how am I doing this? Well there it is there. And what I can do is let's go over to, I'm just doing the Alt-Tab thing, let's go over here. And uh, what I'm trying to do at this point is then just bring this underneath, So let's, or even to the side here. So when you're filling in something like this, just realize that the top line should be blank because this is blank. If we count the number of lines here, we've got one, including the blank line, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you count down here, there's exactly eight lines here. So this should be exactly what there is here. So spend the next few minutes filling that in. And the nice thing is that if you were to print out your program, 
and as we slide back over here it already has the actual output that you've pasted in before so you have a permanent record of here's my code here's the exact output so fill that chart in and we'll start up the video once you've got that done again finally we're on the last part of the lab and it talks about backslash n as a new line character and when it sees that it goes to a new line you put two backslash n's it goes down two lines backslash t which is a tab character is kind of interesting because no matter where you are if you do a backslash tab or backslash t within the first eight it jumps to the ninth position so if you're on column two here it would jump to column nine if you're on three and do a backslash tab it's going to go to there so these are like tab stops so if you're anywhere from one to eight it goes to nine if you're anywhere from nine to sixteen it goes to seventeen if you're anywhere from seventeen and you, i think you get the picture that it's just a bunch of tabs so we're going to be using that and the concept that we had before is that if you want a b double backslash will make a single backslash show up and a double percent sign will make a single percent sign show up because what we're trying to do now is come up with exact printf statements that will be used in a C program to print exactly what's here. So to get this first slash to come out, because it's just text, and we don't want backslash t because that's going to go to a next tab position, we just want it to say backslash t. So I think you'll see this as backslash backslash t. And to make a quote come up, I think you remember is, yeah, backslash tab is what is not it, sorry. It's backslash double quote, backslash double quote. And then you want it to go to a new line and print this out. So, <coughs> excuse me, since I'm very lazy, I'm just going to grab the text. I'm going to control C. This is a quick little tip you can do. Now, <coughs> if we go up here, what we can do is, this is perfectly good code. What we can do is control X and we want this get char. So I'm just going to go down here and paste in this and put our printfs that we need. So we've commented all the program that we wanted. This is a great way of using this. And we'll put in printf, quote, like so, and then do control V. Oops, what did I forget? I forgot to control C, didn't I? So let's do this again. Let's grab all this, control C, then go back in here and control V. Now to get a backslash T, we need two backslashes to get a backslash quote, and these are not proper quotes. Let's change the quotes first. And let's also put a backslash in front of each one because that makes it print as a quote instead of actually doing some other weird stuff. And then to finish this off, we'll go over here and we'll put a quote bracket semicolon. Now, you'd think this would work, and it should, and let's give it a shot. Let's hit F5 and see what happens. We've got a printf get char, and that's all that should be activated. So let's let it build and do its thing here. And then let's compare our output to what we're supposed to get in our lab. Let's take a look. So there's backslash tab is a tab character. Let's bring up our actual um, thing that we've got here for what happened there. Okay, let's bring up this. There we go. And then let's bring up our output underneath. So I think you can see that this is pretty much what we've got. Backslash T is the quote tab quote character. That's pretty much what it is. Now notice here, this is almost the same text. So I'm lazy. So let's go back and hit enter key and we're back to our program. Let's go back to our program here. And let's get rid of this here. And what we want to do at this point is say, okay, it's pretty much the same output. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight that. Notice the cursor I slid here and onto the next line. I'm going to control C and control V, paste that back, control V again, paste back a new line. Now if you looked at the lab, instead of saying backslash tab this time, it says backslash N is the, if I double click here, I can type in the word new line character. And that should work, but you're going to see something a little, you, can you see what's going to be the problem when we run this? Well, let's take a look and see. So we're going to run it, F5, <coughs> start debugging, and when it's finished, I think it's not exactly what we had in mind. Let's go back and take a look at our thing here and see what our, out whoops, what our output is, comparatively speaking. Notice this is perfect to here, but this needs to be on a new line. So what we're going to do, it's very simple to fix. We're just going to go back here and put, why not up here, a backslash in. And if we run it up this time, what you're going to see is it's going to come up perfectly this time and be exactly what we want as output. 
and it's going to do exactly what it is that we wanted to do in our thing here. So the first two, two of three, that's not bad. Let's bring up our output. Come on, stop that. Down we go. And I think you can see that indeed these two lines are exactly what it is we need. Now we just have one more line to go, and I think you can notice now that we need a backslash in here to go to the next line. A forward slash isn't special. The only thing special left on this last line is the percent sign. And let's see if you can figure out how to make that work. Let's go back to our program. And let's see. So we're going to say printf. Oops, printf quote. Now I can put a backslash in here. I could put it on the previous line. And being lazy, let's go over here. Let's grab all of this. Whoops. Grab all of this. Got to be careful. There we go. Control C. Let's go back here. And Control V. Let's print that in. And the only thing we need to do, I think, is put a percentage, a quote, bracket, and a semicolon. And let's run that up and see. <coughs> We're almost there. We're almost there. So, let's see. Is this exactly what we want? Well, let's go back and take a look at what our output's supposed to look like. It's supposed to look like this. Let me just get rid of that. Bring up our output screen underneath. Let's take a look at that. And I think you can see that this is pretty much what we need to see. This and this are practically identical. So let's take a look so you can fill in these three lines with exactly the printfs we need. Let's go back to our program. And there's our three printfs there that we need to put in. So I'll leave those up at the end of the video here. So all you have to do is type exactly this or write this exactly on those three lines. There's exactly what you're going to need. And this is the end of lab number one. And we made it. Yay!